We continue on today with chapter 11, The Invitation to Healing. If sickness is separation, the decision to heal and to be healed is the first step toward recognizing what you truly want. Every attack is a step away from this and every healing thought brings it closer. The Son of God has both Father and Son because He is both Father and Son. To unite having and being is to unite your will with His, for He wills you Himself, and you will yourself to Him because in your perfect understanding of Him you know there is but one will. Yet when you attack any part of God and His Kingdom, your understanding is not perfect, and what you really want is therefore lost to you. Healing thus becomes a lesson in understanding, and the more you practice it, the better teacher and learner you become. If you have denied truth, what better witnesses to its reality could you have than those who have been healed by it? But be sure to count yourself among them, for in your willingness to join them is your healing accomplished. Every miracle that you accomplish speaks to you of the fatherhood of God. Every healing thought that you accept, either from your brother or in your own mind, teaches you that you are God's Son. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, lies the denial of God's fatherhood and of your sonship. And denial is as total as love. You cannot deny part of yourself because the rest will seem to be separate and therefore without meaning. And being without meaning to you, you will not understand it. To deny meaning is to fail to understand. You can heal only yourself for only God's Son needs healing. You need it because you do not understand yourself, and therefore do not know what you do. Having forgotten your will, you do not know what you really want. Healing is a sign that you want to make whole, and this willingness opens your ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit, whose message is wholeness. He will enable you to go far beyond the healing you would undertake, for beside your small willingness to make whole, he will lay his own complete will and make yours whole. What can the Son of God not accomplish with the fatherhood of God in him? And yet the invitation must come from you, for you have surely learned that whom you invite as your guest will abide with you. The Holy Spirit cannot speak to an unwelcoming host, because he will not be heard. The eternal guest remains, but his voice grows faint in alien company. He needs your protection, only because your care is a sign that you want him. Think like him ever so slightly, and the little spark becomes a blazing light that fills your mind so that he becomes your only guest. Whenever you ask the ego to enter, you lessen his welcome. He will remain, but you have allied yourself against him. Whatever journey you choose to take, he will go with you, waiting. You can safely trust his patience, for he cannot leave a part of God. Yet you need far more than patience. You will never rest until you know your function and fulfill it, for only in this can your will and your Father's be wholly joined. To have him is to be like him, and he has given himself to you. You who have God must be as God, for his function became yours with his gift. Invite this knowledge back into your mind, and let nothing that obscures it enter. The guest whom God sent you will teach you how to do this. If you but recognize the little spark and are willing to let it grow, your willingness need not be perfect, because his is. If you will merely offer him a little place, he will lighten it so much that you will gladly let it be increased. And by this increase, you will begin to remember creation. 
Would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? You will accept only whom you invite. You are free to determine who shall be your guest and how long he shall remain with you. Yet this is not real freedom, for it still depends on how you see it. The Holy Spirit is there, although he cannot help you without your invitation, and the ego is nothing, whether you invite it in or not. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality, and of your guest only the Holy Spirit is real. Know then who abides with you, merely by recognizing what is there already, and do not be satisfied with imaginary comforts. Comforts. For the Comforter of God is in you. And from the workbook, Lesson 79 Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. A problem cannot be solved if you do not know what it is. Even if it is really solved already, you will still have the problem because you will not recognize that it has been solved. This is the situation of the world. The problem of separation, which is really the only problem, has already been solved. Yet the solution is not recognized because the problem is not recognized. Everyone in this world seems to have his own special problems, yet they are all the same and must be recognized as one if the one solution that solves them all is to be accepted. Who can see that a problem has been solved if he thinks the problem is something else? Even if he is given the answer, he cannot see its relevance. That is the position in which you find yourself now. You have the answer, but you are still uncertain about what the problem is. A long series of different problems seems to confront you, and as one is settled, the next one and the next arise. There seems to be no end to them. There is no time in which you feel completely free of problems and at peace. The temptation to regard problems as many is the temptation to keep the problem of separation unsolved. The world seems to present you with a vast number of problems, each requiring a different answer. This perception places you in a position in which your problem solving must be inadequate and failure is inevitable. No one could solve all the problems the world appears to hold. They seem to be on so many levels, in such varying forms, and with such varied content, that they confront you with an impossible situation. Dismay and depression are inevitable as you regard them. Some spring up unexpectedly, just as you think you have resolved the previous ones. Others remain unsolved under a cloud of denial, and rise to haunt you from time to time, only to be hidden again but still unsolved. All this complexity is but a desperate attempt not to recognize the problem, and therefore not to let it be resolved. If you could recognize that your only problem is separation, no matter what form it takes, you could accept the answer, because you would see its relevance. Perceiving the underlying constancy in all the problems that seem to confront you, you would understand that you have the means to solve them all, and you would use the means because you recognize the problem. In our large, longer practice periods today, we will ask what the problem is and what the answer to it is. We will not assume that we already know. We will try to free our minds of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have. We will try to realize that we have only one problem which we have failed to recognize. We will ask what it is and wait for the answer. We will be told. 
Then we will ask for the solution to it, and we will be told. The exercises for today will be successful to the extent to which you do not insist on defining the problem. Perhaps you will not succeed in letting all your preconceived notions go, but that is not necessary. All that is necessary is to entertain some doubt about the reality of your version, of what your problems are. You are trying to recognize that you have been given the answer by recognizing the problem, so that the problem and the answer can be brought together and you can be at peace. The shorter practice periods for today will not be set by time, but by need. You will see many problems today, each one calling for an answer. Our efforts will be directed toward recognizing that there is only one problem and one answer. In this recognition are all problems resolved. In this recognition there is peace. Be not deceived by the form of problems today. Whenever any difficulty seems to rise, tell yourself quickly, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Then try to suspend all judgment about what the problem is. If possible, close your eyes for a moment and ask what it is. You will be heard and you will be answered. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. So today, from the text, we invite healing. We invite the awareness that the Son of God and the Father are one in spirit, with a united will, that having and being are the same, that what I have is what I am, and what I am is what I have, that the Kingdom of Heaven is the perfect understanding of God and God's will and the knowledge that there is but one will. Today we see that healing is our lesson in understanding. As we bring all projected problems of the world back to the mind, seeing that the only problem Realizing that the only problem is a belief in separation from God, is a belief that I can create myself and make my own identity apart from the identity that God created for me, as me, as Christ. There could be no meaning found in the world of images. It seemed during sleep that God's will was forgotten. Today is a day of healing and remembering, of remembering wholeness, of remembering completion. And I cannot accept the solution for the error of separation. I cannot accept the correction for the error of separation unless I see the problem exactly as it is in mind, belief, one faulty belief. not a situation in the world, not 
the circumstance in the world, not an outcome in the world of images. Just a belief in the mind, a tiny mad idea that has already been corrected. The solution has already been given, but I cannot accept the solution if I perceive the problem as outside of my mind. Human beings, personalities, seem to have many problems. They seem to have their own special problems. Jesus tells us, yet they are all the same and must be recognized as one if the one solution that solves them all is to be accepted. He reminds us that even if you've been given the answer, you cannot see its relevance if you think the problems are something else. The problems are not outside. You can see the problem in the mind and accept the answer in any instant. And until you see the problem is in the mind and accept the answer is in the mind, then Jesus tells us a long series of different problems will seem to confront you. And as one is settled, the next one and the next arise. All this is but the attempt to not recognize the problem where the problem is. This game of the world is an attempt to see external problems and the ego keeps generating more problems and more problems and more problems. And that is why the mind seems to be tired and the sleeping Son of God seems to have fatigue and frustration. Because the ego is just presenting the mind with a vast number of problems and each of these seemingly little problems seems to require a different answer. This is very complex. The ego is very complex and its smoke screens and distractions are very, very complex. And that's why Jesus tells us as he's speaking of faulty, fragmented perception, this perception places you in a position in which your problem solving must be inadequate and failure is inevitable. So we can't solve a complex problem because problems are not complex. It is one belief. It is one belief in the mind that separation from God is possible. The world is a distracted device. And all this seeming complexity is but a desperate attempt not to recognize the problem and therefore not to let it be resolved. Today, we go inward. We pray to be released. We ask what the problem is and what the answer to it is. We will not assume that we already know. We will try to free our minds of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have. We will try to realize that we have only one problem which we have failed to recognize. We open our mind, open our heart, we wait, 
we ask, we listen to receive. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. Amen.